Welcome back to Zion's Redemption Radio Network. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be reading chapter 23 of the Teachings of the Doctrine of Eternal Lives. The title of the chapter is The Fistus Sophia. Eternal Lives, a Justification for the Works of the Dead. The quotes used in this essay are taken from the Fistus Sophia, edited by Carl Schmitz and translated by Violet McDermott, published by E.J. Brill in the Netherlands, 1978, otherwise known as the Askew Codex. The following narrative is portrayed to why Jesus turned the keys of the missionary work among the dead and why he had the gospel preached to those in the spirit world. The answers provided suggest a parallel for all types of works performed for the dead. The justification of Jesus, work for the dead, seems sufficient to also explain the, necess the necessity for temple work for the dead as practiced by the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints with regard to the concept of eternal lives as outlined in this book. The ideas contained in the Fistus Sophia suggest that the proxy work for the dead is an is of absolute necessity, as Jesus said, he caused the path of their course to be accelerated so that they might be pure, purified quickly and they might go upwards quickly. And I lessened their cycles and made their paths easier and was and it was greatly accelerated also before their power diminished within them and they declined and they weakened or they became powerless for their light which was in their place ceased and their kingdom dissolved editorial note the parentheses indicated material included by the original editor of the fista sophia the square brackets indicate material added by the editor of this book after Jesus recounts his ministry in the spirit world to the apostles and to Mary Magdalene, the following dialogue is reported on pages 65 through 79. It happened when Jesus finished, these, finished saying these words, Philip sat writing every word as Jesus said unto them. Philip spoke to Jesus, my Lord, for the sake of what mystery hast thou turned, turned the bondage? Jesus answered, I have turned their path for the salvation of all souls. Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless I had turned their path, a multitude of souls would have been destroyed, and there would have been a delay in the completion of the number of perfect souls, with, uh, which will be accounted among the inheritances of height through the mysteries, and will be the treasury of light of the treasury yeah of light mary magdalene uh, mary magdalene according to the translation said unto jesus my lord in what manner would the souls be delayed outside or in what form will they be quickly purified jesus answered and said unto maria or mary excellent maria mary thou dost well with an excellent question now indeed i will not conceal anything from you from this hour but i will reveal everything to you with certainty and openly hear now maria mary magdalene <laughs> and give ear all all you disciples before i preached to the acons of the eons and all the acons of the i can't even say that word here men I don't know. Um, if you want to read this for yourself, like I said, I'll put the the uh, what I read will be in the the description of the podcast uh, or at Blog Talk Radio in the description there, or in the YouTube video in the description there, so you can uh, try to pronounce these words for yourself. I don't even know what they mean. So, and the sphere uh, spirits in the spirit world. They were all bound with bonds in their, spill, in their spheres and seals, according to the manner in which Jew 
or a form of Jehovah, so in a manner in which Jehovah, the overseer of light, had bound them for the, from the beginning. And each one of them was continuing in his rank to each one was proceeding according to his course, according to the manner in which Jehovah, the overseer of light, had settled it. Next, there is somewhat lengthy dialogue about, the, about Melchizedek, who is called the purifier of light, who, remo who removed the bonds by which those spirits are bound and made their cycles turn quickly. And he, Melchizedek, took away their power, which was in them, and their tear and the tears of their eyes. Incidentally, the Nag Hammadi Library in the book of Melchizedek, pages 439 through 442, Jesus equates himself with Melchizedek by saying, I am Melchizedek. That's interesting. Also see Paul's teachings about the relationship between Melchizedek and Jesus Christ in Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1, 6 through 7, and 15 through 17, and also uh, verses 24 and 25. Following the dial this dialogue regarding Melchizedek's work among the, the spirits in the spirit world, Jesus continues in his narrative as follows. And they cast them into this world of mankind, and they became souls in that, in that place, according to what I have just told you. These things are now fully completed before their power is diminished within them, and they declined and they weakened, or they became powerless. It happened when they became weak, their, their power began to cease within them, and they became weak in their power and their light, which was in their place. Um, and their light, which was in their place, ceased, and their kingdom dissolved. Melchizedek caused them to quickly abandon their cycle, cycles, and he took their light of the treasury of light, and the matter of the dregs or karma of the law of cause and effect, and that's an author's note, uh, or the author of this book, was surrounded and swallowed. They now swallowed their matter that they might not become powerless and weak, that their power might not cease within them and their rulership or kingdom dissolved. And they, and they swallowed them so that they should not dissolve, but that they should be retarded or should spend a great time until the completion of the number of perfect souls, which would be in the treasury of light. It happened now when I came to go forth for the service of the sake of which I was appointed through the commandments of the first mystery. I turned their whole path and their whole course, and I caused the path of their course to be accelerated so that they might be purified quickly, that they might go upwards quickly and and I lessened their cycles and made their path easier. And it was greatly accelerated, and they were confused in their path. And from this time, they were not able to swallow the matter of the dregs of what is purified of their light. Ugh, I'm having a really hard time reading today for some reason. My eyes are bothering me. Ugh. Somebody on Messenger, even though I turned my phone off, it, it like reset itself and turned itself back on. They called me at 3.30 in the morning on Messenger. And uh, <laughs> I know I'm going off on a little tangent, but I'm telling you why my eyes are bothering me today. Partly why. Um This is why on my Facebook account, um, I just restrict everyone, but I save a few people. Um, so if I'm not getting back to you because you're messaging me, I have close to 5,000 followers on Facebook, um, actually just on one account. Um, I've got thousands and thousands of other followers on the different pages. Uh, that uh, follow me, and then I have 
thousands of people in my groups that they might not follow me, but they're in the groups that I am an admin of. Anyway, but when people like friend request me, uh, many times I will just put them on restrict quickly because um, people who call me during the day when I'm asleep, they wake me up and it screws me up. People that call me in the middle of the night because they think they know my schedule or they're from Africa, which is Africa, Pakistan, uh, different countries around the world. Uh, they call me all hours of the day and night, so I just restrict everyone. But um, I'm kind of having a hard time today because I was w woken up last night at 3.30 in the morning, and um, my eyes are kind of tired right now. So, And this stuff is hard for me to read, so I don't believe that – I don't know if I believe the – I, I don't feel like this is true. I know that there's a lot of things that that Jesus Christ taught after his ascension. And I hope to, and I know I will, I will be taught those things someday. The things that he taught his disciples after the resurrection, before his ascension. Like, there's a lot more to the gospel into the record of scriptures than what we have in our written scriptures today. And I look forward to hearing those things. But um, I also know that people, they get this idea in their head and they feel like they're receiving revelation and they'll start writing this stuff down without getting a confirmation of the spirit to make sure it's from God. And they get excited about it because it's such a marvelous mystery that they're learning and um, Satan can teach us mysteries too, but he will delude the mystery and twist it and make it into something it was not meant to be. And, it, and he'll lie within the mysteries that he's revealing to us. And these individuals who, um, in my opinion, who write these things, um, I think they're I think they're stepping beyond the mark to a point, but also they're attributing these things to what uh, to authors that never spoke them. Uh, there's a term for these things it's called pseudepigrapha, and when I'm reading this, I'm just I'm not seeing it. I, maybe it's just I'm tired. Oh, you know, and that's why you should never trust me as far as like telling you 100% truth, because like I have my thoughts and ideas and opinions. Uh, there's things that I do know, absolutely. Uh, but then there's things that I am learning and I'm speculating and I'm trying to understand. And I don't just trust everything that comes along and, and purports to be the words of God or scripture. Um, I try to study it out to the best of my ability and I seek revelation um, as much as I can. So, but we're in it and I will push through it and I'll continue reading even though I'm not sure that this is true. I turned their whole path and their whole course and I caused the path of their course to be accelerated so that they might be purified quickly and they might go upwards quickly and they lessened their cycles and made their path easier. And it was greatly accelerated, and they were confused in their path. And from this time, they were not able to swallow the matter of the dregs of what is purified of their light. And they further lessened their times and their periods, so that the perfect number of souls which will receive mysteries and which will be in the treasury of light should be completed quickly. And unless I had turned their course and unless I had lessened their periods, they would not have allowed any soul to come and to the world on account of the matter of the dregs which they swallowed. And they would have destroyed the multitude of souls on account of this. And I have said to you at this time, I have lessened the times for the sake of my chosen ones. Otherwise, none of the souls could have been saved. 
but I have lessened the times and the periods for the sake of the perfect number of the souls which will receive mysteries, which are the chosen ones. And I had not lessened their periods, the atonement and the work, works for the dead. Oh, that's, uh, that's it, editor's note. And had I not lessened their periods, none of the material souls would have been saved, but they would have been consumed in the fire which is in the flesh. And finally, from the third book, chapter 129 on page two, uh, 326 of the Thistus Sophia, we read, And if, if they receive the mystery while they are still alive, when they come forth from the body, they become beams of light and outpourings of light and penetrate every place until they shall go to the place of their inheritance. But if they are sinners, on the other hand, they, they come forth from the body and have not repented, and you, and you perform for them the mystery of the ineffable so that they should be returned from all the punishments and cast into the righteous body, which will become good and inherit the kingdom of light, or else that they should be brought to the last rank of the light. They are not able to penetrate the places because it is not they who perform the mystery. Thus saith the Lord, The Lord and thy God pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, and the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. That's Second Nephi chapter uh, 8, verse 22. See also Doctrine and Covenants, section 104, verses 8 through 9. So the next chapter is chapter 24. And that chapter is titled Man, Diversity Among Men and Spirits. So um, I know that some people really like this stuff and they get excited because it's extra biblical. Um, I just think that we need to be careful. I believe that we should believe all things. Unless something in us tells us it's not true. But... But try to believe all things and take everything to God and tell him, you know, the things that you study out, if you really believe it, tell him, I believe this is true. I believe this is this is inspired. And see what he says. Yeah, see if there's a confirmation of, of the spirit. If it's true, there will be a confirmation of the spirit. If it is not true, there will be a complete withdrawal of the spirit. But if there is no increase or decrease, that might be that there are many things that are true in it, but it is peppered by the uh, by the deceit of the adversary. And that happens, too. I've read many uh, revelations from other people who have been inspired. Um, and I'll just take uh, a specific individual as my um Example, there was a man that I knew who received many revelations from God, but then he would sit on them and he would say to himself, oh, I think that I was supposed to write this, or I think that I was supposed to write that, and he would add these things, and he would alter these revelations, and God was giving him the ability to receive this as a test to him, but he felt the test. Um Many of the revelations that he that he received were uh, saturated with with lies from the adversary, but there was so much truth in there. But also, there's another thing too: Satan can give you lots of truth and saturate it with lies. So, um, so if you uh, believe something is true and you don't get a yes, it is true, or a no, it's not true. Uh, chances are you need to take it line by line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, and go over the document that you've received. Um, and you should be doing this in Scripture anyway. And and asking God if it's true and asking him what the correct interpretation of the Scripture is. 
so that you will not be deceived, so that you can stand upon the rock of revelation from which Jesus Christ builds his church. So anyway, um, I don't have anything else to say on that. Thank you for listening to this video on this podcast. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.